What's up everybody, Nick O'Dwyer back for the 10th inning with another episode of this day in sports history. In yesterday's episode, we saw many, many Wimbledon finals taking place. We also saw Homer Bailey throw a no-hitter. We have both of those for you today. We have another no-hitter, but we have many Wimbledon finals to get into today. So if you're new to the channel, like what you see, hit that subscribe button. Let's get right into this. This day in sports history. We start out today in 1900, both on the women's and men's side at Wimbledon. On the women's side, Blanche Bingley Hilliard defeated rival Charlotte Cooper 4-6, 6-4, 6-4 to win her sixth and final major. Now on the men's side, R.F. Doherty defeated Sidney Smith 6-8, 6-3, 6-1, 6-2 to win his fourth consecutive Wimbledon title and the fourth and final major of his career on the singles side. One year later at the 1901 finals on the women's side, Charlotte Cooper defeated Blanche Binley Hilliard, revenge for 1900, 6-2, 6-2 in straight sets to win her fourth of five Wimbledon titles and the fourth of five majors. Now we get a little bit of a break in boxing. 1905, Marvin Hart scored a 12th round knockout over Jack Root to win the world heavyweight boxing title. But now we go right back to Wimbledon in 1909, Arthur Gore defeated Josiah Ritchie 6-8, 1-6, 6-2, 6-2, 6-2 after the comeback to win back-to-back -back Wimbledon titles and the final of three majors. Four years later, we stick with Wimbledon. We stick with the men's final. Anthony Wilding wins his fourth straight Wimbledon title, defeating Maurice McLaughlin 8-6, 6-3, 10-8 to win his sixth and final major. Seven years later in 1920, Stay with Wimbledon, stay on the men's side. Bill Tilden would become the first American to win Wimbledon, defeating Gerald Patterson 2-6, 6-3, 6-2, 6-4 to win his first of 10 majors. Five years later, we stay with Wimbledon, but we move to the women's final in 1925. Suzanne Langland gets her sixth Wimbledon singles title, defeating Britton Joan Fry 6-2, 6-0 in straight sets to win her seventh of eight majors. One year later in 1926, stay on the women's side, Katie Godfrey wins her second Wimbledon singles title and second major after beating Lily Alvarez 6-2, 4-6, 6-3. Another break from Wimbledon here, shake it out if you need to. 1931, Matt Schmelin defeated Young Stribling via technical knockout in 15 rounds in his first heavyweight title defense. This was also the first major fight broadcast live on national radio. But now we go right back to Wimbledon in 1931 on the women's final. Silly Alsom defeated Hildy Sperling 6-2, 7-5 to win her second and final major of her career. Five years later in 1936, we move to the men's final. Fred Perry defeated Gottfried von Krom 6-1, 6-1, 6-0 in straight sets to win his third straight Wimbledon title and the seventh of eight overall. One year later, we move right back to the women's final. Dorothy Round defeated Yadvida Yedreovska 6-2, 2-6, 7-5 to win her second Wimbledon title and third and final major. Move up to 1948, stay on the women's final. Louise Bruff defeated Doris Hart 6-3, 8-6 to win her first of three straight Wimbledon titles and second of six majors. We get another break in the action here. 1951 at the PGA Championship, Sam Snead defeated Walter Bercamo 7-6 to win his third PGA Championship and the fifth of seven majors. Right back to it though. At Wimbledon on the men's final, Vic Satius wins his only Wimbledon singles title, beating Dane Kurt Nielsen 9-7, 6-3, 6-4. This would be the first of two majors in the singles side for Satius. One year later, on the women's side, Maureen Connolly wins her third consecutive Wimbledon singles title, defeating Louise Bruff 6-2, 7-5 in straight sets. This would also be her ninth and final major of her career. Another break in the action here, also in 1954 at the U.S. Open on the women's side, Babe Didrikson with a score of 3 over, wins by a record 12 strokes, defeating runner-up Betty Hicks to win her 10th and final major of her career. Now in 1959 at the British Open, 
Gary Player with a score of 4 under would win the first of his 9 major titles, two strokes ahead of runners up Fred Bullock and Flory Van Don. Also in 1959 at the Wimbledon men's final, Alex Olmedo wins his only Wimbledon title defeating Rod Laver 6-4, 6-3, 6-4 to win his second and final major. Five years later in 1964, Roy Emerson defeated Fred Stoll 6-4, 12-10, 4-6, 6-3 in four sets. This would be Emerson's first of two straight Wimbledon single titles and the sixth of 12 overall majors. One year later we moved to the women's side in 1965. Margaret Court defeated Maria Bueno 6-4, 7-5 to win her second of three Wimbledon single titles and her 11th of 24 majors. Now we move up to the 1966 U.S. Open on the women's side. Sandra Spuzic, with a score of 9 over, wins one stroke ahead of runner-up Carol Mann to get her only LPGA victory. Now we have a bit of a weird one here in Major League Baseball. Atlanta Braves pitcher Tony Cloninger becomes the first National League player and the only pitcher in MLB history to hit two grand slams in a single MLB game. The Braves ended up defeating the Giants 17-3 on the day, and talk about a pitcher helping himself out, Cloninger, 9 RBIs on the day. The first Grand Slam came in the first inning off of Bob Pretty, the second came in the fourth off of Ray Sadecki. I couldn't imagine having a better day as a pitcher. Not only are you carving these guys up on the mound, but you also got 9 RBIs by yourself, amazing. One year later in 1970, we stay in Major League Baseball and California Angels pitcher Clyde Wright no hits the Oakland Athletics in a 4-0 victory. Wright on the day, 9 innings pitch, 3 walks allowed, 1 strikeout, got the no hitter. The same time that was happening at the Wimbledon Women's Final, Margaret Court defeated Billie Jean King 14-12, 11-9 to win her third and final Wimbledon singles title. This would also be the third leg of her successful 1970 Grand Slam and the 19th of 24 majors in her career. One year later in 1971, on the men's final now, John Newcomb defeated Stan Smith 6-3, 5-7, 2-6, 6-4, 6-4 to win his third and final Wimbledon singles title and the fourth of seven overall majors. Five years later in 1976, stay with the men's side, Bjorn Borg defeated Ili Nastase 6-4, 6-2, 9-7 to win the first of five straight Wimbledon titles and the third of 11 majors. Now we go to 1977 at the Canadian Open on the women's side, Judy Rankin with a score of 4 under wins three strokes ahead of runners-up Pat Mayers and Sandra Palmer. Back to Wimbledon though, in 1981, on the women's side, Chris Everett defeated Hannah Mandlikova 6-2, 6-2 for her third and final Wimbledon title on the single side and the 11th of 18 majors on the single side. One year later at the 82 finals on the women's side, Martina Navratilova defeated Chris Everett 6-1, 3-6, 6-2 for the first of six straight Wimbledon titles and the 5th of 18 overall majors on the single side. One year later, in 1983, this time on the men's side, John McEnroe wins his 5th career Grand Slam title of 7, defeating Chris Lewis 6-2, 6-2, 6-2. Now we get another break in the action here, 1983 at the Canadian Open Women's Final. Hollis Stacey with a score of 11 under wins 2 strokes ahead of runners-up Joanne Carner and Alice Miller. Five years later at the 1988 Canadian Open Women's Final, Sally Little, with a score of 9 under, wins one stroke ahead of runner-up Laura Davies. Now we have a world record to talk about in 1989. Peter Koek of Kenya set the record for the 3,000 meter steeplechase with 8 minutes, 5.39 seconds. Koek would end up holding this record for about 3 years. Back to Wimbledon in 1993, Steffi Groff defeated Jana Novotna 7-6, 1-6, 6-4 to win her 5th Wimbledon title and the 13th of 18 majors on the single side. One year later we moved to the men's final and Pete Sampras defended his title against Goran Ivanisevic 7-6, 7-6, 6-0. This would be the second of 3 straight Wimbledon single titles and the 5th of 14 majors for Sampras. 
Now we go to the 94 U.S. Senior Open, which saw Simon Hobde with a score of 10 under win one stroke ahead of runners-up Graham Marsh and Jim Albus. Last one of the 20th century here, 1999, on the Women's Wimbledon Final, Lindsay Davenport defeated Steffi Groff 6-4, 7-5 to win her only Wimbledon singles title and the second of three majors. We move up to the 21st century, but we stay with Wimbledon on the women's side. In 2004, Maria Sharapova becomes the first Russian player to win Wimbledon after beating defending champion Serena Williams 6-1, 6-4. This would be the first of five majors for Sharapova. One year later at the 2005 Wimbledon final, this time on the men's side, Roger Federer makes it three straight Wimbledon titles of five straight, beating Andy Roddick 6-2, 7-6, 6-4. This would be the fifth of 20 majors for Roger Federer. Another break here, in 2006 at the US Open on the women's side, Anika Sorenstam, who played an even par, won her 10th and final major, winning by four strokes after a playoff with Pat Hurst. One year later in 2007 at America's Cup, the Swiss defender team defeated Team New Zealand by one second to take the series 5-2. We end today off just like we started it with two Wimbledons. First in 2010 at the women's final, Serena Williams successfully defended her crown by overpowering Vera Svonareva 6-3, 6-2 in straight sets to win her fourth of seven Wimbledon crowns and her 13th of 23 majors. Finally on the men's side in 2011, Novak Djokovic defeated Rafael Nadal 6-4, 6-1, 1-6, 6-3 in four sets. This would be the Joker's first Wimbledon title and his third major of 17 overall. So there you have it. That's what happened on this day in sports history. If I left anything out, I do apologize. I hope you all enjoyed this. As I said, there will be a plethora of tennis content coming out due to the time of the year we're in. Wimbledon is big. That's what happened in history. So I will see you all tomorrow. For Nick George Wire and the 10th inning, be good everybody. Peace.